decided to leave uh, Durban and head south for the winter down to the Cape of all places um, in hope of toggling some of the big winter edibles that frequent the Gullis coastline. South Africans national fish. There's a little back right here. Check. Uh, he said left. Yeah. On the left. We're, we're uh, slightly south of Straits Bay, a place called uh, Rietfontein, beautiful part of the country. And uh, we're going to catch and cook a chalion today. South Africa's national fish. Hopefully, we get one that's size limit, which is 35 centimeters. And then we're going to take it home and uh, I'll show you my secrets. I've uh, had to fly down from, from Durban to the fairest of capes. That's my chosen tackle box for this tour. Which ha actually happens to be my son's tackle box. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Thank you, Trent. Busy uh, fixing my, my guide uh, compliments of <laughs> airlines got broken. <laughs> I'm just using some Cubond. And uh, taking a chance here, yeah, because I haven't got time to rebound a new guard on you. Yeah, I've got a fish. Seems to be working. We're going to use a ringer mustard tuna circle tour. We use for the Khalyun. It's a stronger, stronger hook. So if you do get picked up by something bigger, it won't just bend open. But you won't believe what we found here. We found someone's left their red bait here a few days. It stinks. We're not going to get this off our hands, but let me tell you, I think this is our best shot at Muscle Cracker. I think it's our best shot at Muscle Cracker and even Khalil today. Washing hands to get red bait smell off. It's not going to work. This is not stuff, this, this is... <laughs> That's an unbelievable geez. find, actually. This is the stuff, is proper smelly stuff. Are we using a bit of Fish SA cotton that uh, Dean was nice enough to give us a few spools to have a look at? It's, uh, it's very easy to use, stick in your pocket, off you go. It's easy to wrap around. And then once you've... Oh, this stuff stinks. <laughs> oh, this is proper, proper fraud right like this. It's a khali, I haven't caught one for years, coming from the towel. Yes, please. Awesome. There's a little baby khalyun, my first one in many years. And uh, that's obviously not a keeper. They're quite a slow growing fish, so uh, you, need to, you need to adhere to the bag limits and the size. It's 
size is 35 and you're only allowed two, this guy's gonna go back and grow up to make more. looking for a nice little spot here another little gap to catch a Kalyun uh, heading to a spot called the Eiland uh, I don't know if it's actually really an island these uh, Cape Tonians are a little bit funny with their wording eh? so uh, it might just be a little stone in the water but we'll have to wait and see <laughs> oh no yeah I think that's the island oh, that break offshore saying just now these Captonians call things like that an island. <laughs> <laughs> One very good bait in this particular region is uh, red bait and as you can see around me and behind me there that big pile is just a pile of red bait pods. So he's going to grab one. That's a red bait pod that's washed off the rocks. If it's on the rocks and the water breaks over it you'll see a water spout spray out of the top of this. You cut the top off and the red bait sits inside there way more sustainable to uh, to use the red bait that's washed up as bait than to go and actually cut it off the rocks. So this is my bait for the next throw. Only one reason why the cameraman's staying so far away is because this sticks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just going to cut the top off. As you, oh, this is a good one and it's nice and rotten. And as you can see there's the pod and there's your red bait pod. That's the red bait, rotten red bait. And there you go. Sometimes you can go cut, you'll find with various heads on it, but that one is now empty. Now we're gonna take some of this lovely smelly meat. I'm just gonna trim it up. There's not much in the lines of bait presentation with this, you just gotta get it onto your hook and get your hook proud. And something that's really nice to use is a bait thread that's, that's in a container so that all these highly smelly, disgusting smells, don't get on your bait cotton and actually contaminate it. So you can wash that, but you can't wash that roller bait thread. Just gonna thread it up, turn it, thread it, turn it, get it over the knot, <coughs> continue. You know, I'm using a fairly small hook here, this is a Mustad um, big gun number six, which is quite small, but I'm fishing for a Kalyun. You can see I'm keeping my hook quite proud. And I'm gonna take my bait cotton, and I'm just gonna catch the top of that bait, concentrating on always keeping that hook as proud as I can. And just getting a few turns, just to keep it nice and firm, so it doesn't blob over and choke the hook. So when the fish eats, the hook is proud. If you just put it over, it can sometimes slide down and choke the hook up, and then the fish, you're gonna miss the fish because there's, uh, there's no hook exposed. And I don't ever tie at the bottom. You can see I just leave that very natural. Just at the top, I just catch it and get it nice and firm so it doesn't slide down too much. And there we go. Absolute giant. Right? That's, <laughs> that's a rockfish. That's a little, that's a cliff fish, a little cliff fish, yeah. Let's put it back here. Raise on, raise on, raise on, raise on. Raise on. On the bridge. Are you on? That's a nice black One tail. Big, what you guys refer to as a cold stamp. But at least wow, it's a Let's have a look. That is a beast. 
blacktail on a little piece of uh, rotten red bait. So this blacktail is going to make us a nice little meal for later. Bar snacks. Starters. Wow. Chisel. <laughs> so the black tail's been scaled. I'm going to just uh, trim it a bit and then score it. Then we're going to put it in, a, in an oven dish and we're going to put it in the pizza oven outside. And once it's cooked to perfection, I'm going to come inside and uh, add all the Asian style veg to it. And uh, the rest of the crew are going to taste it and tell me what they think. All right, so basically what I'd like to do is take as many of the smaller bones out of the fish as I possibly can. So after scaling it, use the knife and I actually just cut down just a slight incision not too deep down there turn it over same thing that side I'll just use a pair of scissors and I go in and that takes out a huge amount of the smaller bones same thing on its back You've got to make sure you've got a very sharp knife to do this with. Two good things here, I'm taking out bones and I'm opening flesh to get flavour in. And then lastly, before we put it in the pan, we actually just score it. So I'll just score it across this body. Four cuts, turn it over, do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and that's ready to go into the pan and then into the fire. So there we go. We're just going to uh, put some olive oil on it. This is where you get your fingers dirty. Make sure you get, into all, get that olive oil into all the grooves, all the cuts. And then I'm just going to season the fish with a bit of black pepper and some salt. Okay, and then she's ready for the pan. She's ready for the pizza oven. Right, there's the black tail. And he's going into this beautifully hot pizza oven. Quite deep. And we're going to leave him there for about 15 minutes till he gets a bit crispy on top. Awesome. Let's go right inside and drink some wine. All right, there we go, non-stick frying pan, high heat, a little bit of a dash of olive oil. Get the onions in first. And the ginger. Okay, so I'm just gonna get these onions and uh, ginger strips frying. A little bit of pepper. Touch of salt. Not too much salt, because we're using soy sauce and we're using fish sauce, so you don't want to go overboard on the salt. Okay, once those are going and you start seeing the, the onions becoming a little bit translucent, tuck in your garlic. If you put your garlic in from the start, you burn your garlic and everything goes bitter. Okay, and then just half your spring onions that you've cut. You can see I've trimmed them lengthways. You don't want to overdo the spring onions, they just got to be basically heated up. If you go too far with those, they get a little soggy. Same with the red peppers. You don't want to go too much on them. You want everything to be crunchy and delicious. It's a fresh meal. It's a, it's a Thai-inspired almost fusion. I'm using a few more things that just Thai. All right, now we're going to get some flavors in here. Some soy sauce. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Quite a bit of soy sauce, I'd say about probably 10 tablespoons of fish sauce. Just gives it a bit of a flavour. I would use fresh lemons, but unfortunately the little town of uh, Sleepy Hollow of Stress by has got no fresh lemons. So we're going to use a little bit of lemon juice, another like 4 or 5 tablespoons of lemon juice, about 4 tablespoons of honey.
Flexel is busy cooking in the pizza oven. Cool. Now we're gonna wait for that fish to get ready. Alrighty, I got a feeling that this is gonna be perfectly ready. Let's grab it. What's nice about the pizza oven is it gives it that that smokiness. It's an awesome flavor. There we go. Perfectly cooked. Oh, and it smells unbelievable. Let's take it inside and sort it out. A whole lot of uh, cooking has got to do with presentation. <laughs> Not that I'm too worried because he's actually going to scoff this thing like it's a bulldog eating pup. I'm just going to pour it right over the fish. And you can do this with pretty much any fish. You can do it with a slinger, you can do it with a soldier, you can do it with a shad, you can do it, sorry, I'm in the cape, an elf. Even a bass would work. In fact, I learned this from someone who made it with carp. And then they have a few of the trimmings. Boom. And the last thing I need is sesame seeds, but once again, straight by doesn't have any sesame seeds. Done. Alright, I'm supposed to be drinking white wine with fish, but it's the Cape after all and it's ice cold. I mean, it's about 20 degrees outside and I come from Durban, so 20 degrees is like freezing. It's not really 20, it's like 12. None of these likes want to taste this fish without me testing it first, just in case I drop dead. So I'm going to have a nice chunk of this. The one thing I must say about black tail, the, the meat is phenomenal. Look how white that meat is. Let oh, me get some of these nice little bits of veg and off we go. Mm. Sorry guys. Okay, no, it's good. Come on. I want to try this. Keep an eye out for day two of this awesome adventure. Coming soon. Ray, not only can you catch it, you can cook <laughs> it. You're gonna cook it, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of catchcook.com. If you have any queries, pop us a message below. And don't forget, subscribe. It'll help you find out when the new videos are released.